No organization is responsible for the content of this video. All errors and omissions are the sole responsibility of myself, David Iverson. This video must not be your only source of information. Please attend official USSA educational opportunities. Please download official USSA educational materials. All right, this is going to be another long video because what we're going to do in this video is we're going to fill out a timing and data technical report. And it's going to take some time, and uh, but we're going to go through it slow. And at the end, we're going to have a complete timing and data technical report for you to see how it was filled out. Now, I have made a PDF available of this data. And if you haven't visited the website already, if you've just been finding these videos on YouTube, I have a website <coughs> where I have some extra information and basically it's web.mac.com DJI 3000 slash race and race needs to be capitalized then if you go to the ttr.html that's the timing technical report and then you can go down here ttr example data.pdf and um, things are going to look differently when you arrive at this site because I'm building the site right now and so as I build things uh, I add them in so it's very much in flux but you should somewhere on, on several different pages you should be able to find the TTR example data PDF and so what do I have in there well I'm gonna have uh, a blank TTR then I'm going to have uh, we're gonna to get to this we're going to get, then I've got timing tapes right off my timer. Then I've got timing logs from split second. And then I've got hand times that were taken. And so this is all from the same race. So these were actual data, actually actual numbers, the whole thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my uh, spreadsheet and so now I've got a spreadsheet here and I found this let's see hang on a second there we go okay so if you download the master packet of forms and that's a whole nother video right in there but you download the master packet of forms and bid 40 and 41 is a fist timing and data technical technical report well, what about the USSA? Well, we only use one report for all the races that we do. USSA and FIS all use the same report. So, 41 FIS timing and data technical report. And so I have opened it up and I have saved it and I've renamed it. And we're just going to go through and we're going to fill it all out. So, first thing, Codex or race code. That's the topic of another video. There's a lot of other videos that are uh, suggested by this one. And I'm not going to get into every little thing as we go through. So by this point in time, you should know what your race code is. Or if you don't know what your race code is, you should be able to find it. Or you should be able to find a video that I have made that will allow you to do that process. So we're going to call our race code 0 uh, I, I'm sorry, U0999. So a USSA race, uh, number 999, with a zero up front. And the location, our location is going to be Burke Mountain, Vermont. And nation is going to be USA. Event name is going to be test GS for YouTube and the date uh, well date I can't remember let's go to my data and we can figure out on my data what the date was uh, my date for this race was the 1st of February 09 so day was 01 uh, month was 02, year was 09. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to say it was 
a GS. And we're going to say here it was a ladies GS. Now I'm going to have to go through this again and do it for a men's GS because on that day I ran a ladies I ran ladies first run and then men's first run and then ladies second run and then men's second run. So I'm actually going to need two of these to I'm going to need two of these forms, one for the ladies, one for the men. In this video, I'm just going to do the ladies and I'm not going to do the ladies and the men. Okay. So we filled out this. The next section here gets kind of um, daunting and intimidating. Your system A timer, you got a brand, a model, a serial number, homologation number, system B timer, brand, model, serial number, homologation number. Pretty scary. I'm going to have to make a whole nother video on how to fill, on how to find that information and how to fill it out. But the good news is, is that once you know that information, you should just be able to uh, find it once and then cut and paste. So here, what I've just pulled up is I have pulled up a previous TTR that I have done for a previous race and I filled in all my data. So uh, I run all algae stuff and my system A timer is a timey PXE and my system B timer is a timey PXE. My start gate is an STSC M2S. My finish cells are RLS1NRX and RLS1N. Here I got their serial numbers. Here I got their homologation numbers. Um, so what you should be able to do is you should be able to look at your timing equipment and you should be able to determine what the model of your timing equipment is and if you sort of pull open the battery case or you kind of look carefully you should be able to find a serial number if you can't find these things then contact um, timing guys or um, Phoenix Sports or Reliable Racing or whoever sold you your timing equipment and they'll be able to help you out find your model and serial number and then in my PDF this was sort of, this is in the, um, I believe it's in the comp guide. I believe I pulled this from the comp guide. And so these homologation numbers are actually going to change because they're going to re-homologate a bunch of stuff. But you can find it in the comp guide. And my time EPXE is in ALG.001.02. And so I pull over here, and at some point in time, I did ALG.001.02. So I filled all this in on a previous TTR. And so then all I have to do is I just have to paste it in, and then I'm all set with that. Do it once, and then just cut and paste unless you change something in your equipment, or if they change the homologation numbers. Okay. Scoring and results preparation. Well, that is the version of split second that you have. So uh, let's go here. Um, and if you, so right now the current split second software is 6.23 revision 1. Um, just making a note to myself. Um, okay, 6.23 revision one. <clears throat> okay, so my brand is, uh, I it's national, uh, what did I put, what did I put before? Thelma had something that she wanted done. National slash fist software. That's what Thelma wants in there. So that's what she gets. And my version is 6.23 revision 1. 
6.23 revision 1. And the date on that was, well, it'll be 9 3 2011. 9 0 9 0 3 uh, 2011. And then results equal tapes? Yes. So basically, that just means that the data that came into your timers and showed up on the tapes ends up as being the results. Okay, now um, connections to start, cable, radio, or other. Well, my system A is connected by cable. My system B is connected by cable. My voice communication is by cable. And it is also by radio. Okay, now Power on time for warm up. So the question is, is when did I come into the timing shack and first plug in and turn on my timers to just let them warm up in preparation for the day? Well, I usually get them, I usually show up early, and so I usually have them set up by, say, 6.45. Okay, and then they just sort of run and they just do their things and I do all kinds of tests. Now, we're going to get into the heart of this in just one second. Okay, so now, when did I synchronize my timers for the first run? Well, I have that information over here. These are the tapes that I printed out from the computer. Well, these just came off of the algae uh, when I was doing this race. And so I synchronized at 9.16. So 0, 0.916. Or you can just take that 0 out, I think. 916. Now when did I sync when did I do the hand sync? Well, the hand sync usually has to happen before that uh, because I have to get the the hand timers out onto the hill and I I really can't get the hand timers out onto the hill uh, within half an hour of the start of the race. It just doesn't work. I want to do them about 45 minutes before the race and then I want to get them out there. So let's say I synced the hand times at 8.45. So here, this is when I synced my hand timers, and this is when I synced my electronic timers. Now, sync confirm at plus one minute. Now, I have a confession to make that I actually uh, did not do a sync confirm at plus one minute, because things get busy in the timing shack and that's just kind of the way that it goes. So I'm sure that I synced the timers and then I was all ready to go and then something intervened, somebody, some issue happened and we ended up having to sort of push things back and so that sync plus one just never happened. Okay, now if I'm looking at my timing tape, I have right here that I have a CO and that's a start on my timing tape, that's a start. So I'm going to count that as my sync plus one, just because you got to. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You don't want to fabricate information. The information might not be exactly what the people in the office are looking for, but if it's accurate information, well, they're going to have to deal with it. So that was my system A. And so then, somewhere down here, these are off of my primary tapes. Here's my secondary tapes. And so I look up here, and I've got a 916 sync time, and I've got a 929425893. And so 
I come in here, 92942.5893. There you go. So there's my sync confirm at plus one minute. Now the key thing is, is that for our synchronization to be valid, those two, these two need to be within five thousandths of a second of each other. Right now I'm within seven ten thousandths of each other, so this meets the criteria. But these need to be within five thousandths of each other. If they are not, you need to resync. If you can consistently not meet that, then you need to sort of get your timer serviced or you need to talk with the timing provider about how you're going to fix that. Okay, now I want to show you this little box right down in here. They don't really ever explain what this is about right here. That little set of parentheses, that is the first, that is the bib number for the first competitor of the first run. This set of parentheses is the bib number for the last competitor of the first run and there's a little star and down here it says let's see if I can find it first and last to finish with well it's first and last to finish with complete data so complete data means you've got a system A time you've got a system B time and you've got a hand time. So let's just try to maximize this out a little bit so that it gives you a good perspective on what we're filling out. So first thing that I got to do is I got to figure out what that is. Well, first run is probably going to be bib number one. I'm going to count on it being bib number one. Now I'm going to go over to my this is the this is what split second prints out this is a timing log from split second and right here I'm going to zoom in on it it says gives me a start time for bib 1 gives me a start time for bib 1 and it gives me a finish time for bib 1 and it gives me an elapsed for bib 1 and that's all coming off of the primary system so it's 932532569 and then 933453439 and then elapsed time 5208 five, so I come in here and I fill all that information in 932532569933453439 and then elapsed time comes over here as 5 I'm going to do 0 52.08. Okay. Now I gotta find that information in my system B. So let's back out. Let's zoom out. Here's my secondary tapes right here. And here I have my start for bib one is 932532548 and uh, my finish is 933453383 and my last time is the same 5208 which I would expect because my timers are working properly so I add that in 932 Five three point two five four eight. Oh, that should be a point. And then nine three three 
four five point three three eight three. Now, as I explained before, or in a different video, so right now, those two are different by about two thousandths of a second, and then these two are different by about five thousandths of a second, and I would expect a bigger difference at the finish line than I would at the start gate, because the start gate has two switches that are tied into the same box, and then my finish eyes, I've got two finish eyes, well I've actually got four different eyes on four posts, and so the alignment is going to be bigger in space and there's going to be more variability in my finish times. Last thing that I have to do before I'm done with bib one is I have to go and calculate the hand time. So I go back here and I find the hand time and so here I've got a hand time of the start hand time is nine three two five three one two which is again this should be a broken record because I'm doing time of day and so all these times should all match up and they should all start to sound the same and so here's the finish hand time for bib one so it's nine three three four five point two eight and so now if I do that subtraction and you can hit pause and and subtract that off yourself and I'm gonna get a six I'm gonna get a one I'm gonna get a two and I'm gonna get a five so I'm gonna get five two one six so zero five two point one six and I'm happy with that because it's only off by eight hundredths of a second now I want to jump in here and just add a nice little note now a lot of people find this really hard to fill out and so they save it till the end but at, at the end of the day you're gonna have a hard time finding all this data and you're gonna be tired and people are gonna to wanna to get out of there and you're gonna make mistakes but now also more importantly the whole point of doing this is to make sure that your system is working correctly and so if you get to the end of the day and you find out that your numbers don't match up and that your system did not work correctly, well now it's the end of the day and there's nothing you can do about it. So you should really be filling this out on the fly. You should be taking the time to check all these numbers and fill all these numbers in as they happen. So if there's a problem with your system, you can stop the race while the you can stop the race before the race has really gotten going you can correct your problem and then you can go on and you can run your race without problems so in this case I checked my synchronization and saw that my synchronization worked then as soon as racer one finished I checked the system A time checked the system B time checked the hand times uh, had, had my hand timers radio in what they got and I checked the hand times and I was happy with that and so I'm right off the bat at 9.33 and well about by the time I got down to this about 9.40.34 at 9.34 in the morning I had a complete set of data for bib number one and I was happy and I was confident that everything was going to be moving in the right direction okay so we've done that, now we let the race go, and then we're going to do the uh, start time of day for the last competitor. So I gotta go back and I gotta figure out who my last competitor was. And so first off, I gotta figure out, let's see, okay. There's a, uh, boom, 41 somewhere in here. I'm going to find out right there. So let's zoom in on this. So that's the start of the timing session of run one for the men. 
And so this is going to be the end of the girls. And so it looks like my last girl was bib 58, and bib 58 had a start time of 10, 22, 42, point four one three nine and had a finish time of ten twenty three forty eight point four eight five five for an elapsed time of one oh six point zero seven so let's get that filled in right here right down here That bib number was 58, so that goes right there. And the start time was 10, 22, 42, 4, 1, 3, 9. The finish time was 10, 23, 48, point four eight five five, And the elapsed time was 1, 06.07 and I should probably save this because I haven't saved it in a while and it'd really be a bad idea if you lost all this and now I've got to go and I've got to find that corresponding data on the backup and the hand times uh, I can zoom in a little bit more Okay, there's the start of my secondary, and then probably somewhere down at the bottom of this page. There you go. So I'm going to zoom in and find it for you so you can read it. And so there's my bib 58, and again, the broken record starts 10, 22, 42, 4, 1, 4142 and then 10234848483 and the elapsed time is the same because my timers work and so I plug that in there 102242.4843 Oh, sorry, that was the primary, 4142, and then 10, 23, 48.4883. Okay, so then at the end of the race, at the end of that girl's run, I see that um, my synchronization between my start box, between my starts, is three ten thousandths of a second, whereas it was um, seven ten thousandths of a second before, and so it's getting a little bit better actually. It's sort of drifting together, and I'm off by about three hundred three thousandths of a second on my finishes. So my synchronization has uh, stayed stable over the course of the hour that it took to run the girls. Now I'm going to go find the hand times here in a second, but I just want to bring you back to this idea of when I said that the do the results equal the tapes. Well, here we can go and here's the raw tapes. And if I look uh, probably right in here, That's a little bit too late. Scroll down, scroll this way. These are just raw tapes that were just being spread, spit out by the timey that I run. And right here, here's my start. CO means a start at 10.22.42.4139. And then the finish for that person is 10.23. Oh, it looks like that was, uh, so that was the person before. So there's 10.23.48.4855. So there is a finish time for bib 58. 
and there's a start time for bid 58 and if you sort of notice um, that these are probably just false uh, maybe we, okay so there's ah there's a little bit of a gap there's a six minute gap between that fin that person finishes and then there's a six minute gap and then this person starts and so that six minutes was when I was transferring from the ladies to the men okay now let's go find that hand time for bib 58 so it's gonna well it's right there I went right to it okay I bet you anything that is the start hand time and I know it's the start hand time because it's that same bad penny coming back again. 10, 22, 4, 2, 3, 8. And then I got to scroll down to find my finish hand time. And I'm, I'm radioing out to my hand timers to say, hey, can you radio in a hand time for uh, competitor 58? And look at that. I've got 10, 23, 4, 8, 3, 0. So it's going to be a 30 minus 30 is going to be 92, 7, 5. I'm going to get 105, 9, 2. So 105.92. So that one was off by 15 hundredths of a second. Okay, so I have done those, and I've got this little thing all filled out. Now, the next thing, what was the best run time from System A? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to have to pause and look that one up. Okay, so what I did is, uh, while, while you guys weren't watching, I surfed to vera.org, and I went to that race, and I looked up the results for that race, and um, it's actually, this is a pretty easy example. Um, bib number one wins the first run with a 5208, and then wins the second run with 53.13. So bib one wins the first run, and the second run is some girl, Michaela Schifrin, I don't know, J3s. I wonder what she's doing today. Um, okay. And so when we go here, plug in bib one, and her time was this time right up here, 5208. And where results from system A? Yes, they were. And list any bib numbers used uh, in the results other than system A, I used all system A. And any comments? My comments are there were no timing anomalies. And we certify that the timing calculations of this event adhered to FIS rules. Yes, chief of timing was me. And then my email for you guys. You can give me a USSA race help at gmail.com. I'm going to sign it right there. The technical delegate will put in, well, we can actually figure out who the technical delegate was. It was uh, Kirk Dwyer. And his email and telephone goes in there. His signature goes in there. If you have a FIS TD, the FIS TD number goes in there. For USSA TDs, I usually throw in, you know, E08. Just making up a USSA number. So, and I plug in, uh, I, I can't remember what my USSA number is. Good enough. So I'd put my USSA number in there. I'd put Kirk's USSA number in there. I'd put his email and telephone there. I got my telephone number there. I would sign it. I would sign it, or he would sign it. 
Um, if it was a fist TD, you'd put the fist TD in there. And for most of you guys, we are done. So let me just back it up so you can see it all. Keep backing out. So that's kind of the whole thing filled out, but it's not the whole thing filled out. I've only, only done the first run. If you're confident at this point in time that you know what's going on, then just stop watching the video. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete this by going through and doing the second run. So right now, leap right into it. Okay, when did I start the second run? Right there, I went right to it. My synchronization for the second run happened at 12.13. So let's go through and do this here. Zoom it in. Synchronization was at 12, 13, 0, 0. And we'll say that my hand sync was at 11, 45. Now, what was my sync plus 1 for that? There I did, okay, so now I've got a 12, 34, 5, 1. Let me get another piece of scrap paper here because this one's kind of full. 12, 34, 5, 1, 0. 0.6114. And while I'm at it, I'm going to swing over here and I'm going to find that same set of numbers on my secondary tapes. That's. Uh, that's it right there. 12.34.51.6111. So I'm only off by three ten thousandths of a second. So 12.34.51.6114. And then I've got 12.31.51.6114. Now, who was my first competitor? I'm gonna go over here. Where am I looking? I, so I'm looking for a 12, so I gotta move over here. That's 13. Now I'm in the 12s, but too late. 1234 is gonna be down here. Since everything is sequential, I can find everything pretty easily. Okay, so now, because we flip in the Northern Vermont Council, because we flip the whole field, now Biv 58 is my first competitor of the second run, and Biv 38 started at 12.37.52.7014 and finished at 12.38.59.2014. And had an elapsed time of 106.49. So let's go back and fill those out 12, 37, 52.7014. And uh, that's down here, sorry, 12, 38, 59. Point two zero zero seven, and the net time was 106.49. Now, one thing before we let it get away, we got to scroll over. Our first competitor for the second run has to go in this little set of parentheses, so that's bib 58. Now, I don't want to forget it, so my last competitor for the second run is going to be bib one. And then also while I'm here and I'm remembering these things, I remembered that bib one won the second run too. 
and time for the second run was 53.13, but I want to put 0 colon 53.13. Okay, so now I'm sort of free to just sort of focus on this set of, of numbers here because I've done the other things off to the side and so we can just pull it up so you can see it nice and we don't have to and now we shouldn't have to fly around all that much okay now where did bib 1 go so bib 25 21 I bet you she's down here there you go okay so on this sheet we are, uh, I'm, ta I'm taking it out of order, I'm sorry. That's not what I want to do first. I want to find the secondary time for bib 58. So there's my secondary. And there it is right in here. And so let me blow it up. Okay, bib 58, 93752.7010, uh, finish time 12.3859.2070, and you notice that the elapsed time here is, uh, the elapsed time 10650 is one hundredth of a second different. You would expect that because we have independent systems doing independent jobs and they are going to disagree at some level. That's the whole point of having independent systems is that they are independent. They are close but they are not identical. They look all very, very, very similar. And now I'm going to find a hand time for bib 58 by going down right around here, I'd say. And let's pull out. Oh, that's zooming in. There's 58's time right over there. Okay, so uh, start time 12, 37, 52.51, and I got to go find the, this hand timer started the girl's second run on a different page. Again, they're independent people, they're doing their own thing. So, they're not identical, they're not robots. Okay, so then 58's hand time finish is 1238.59.03. So I do that out and I get uh, 86, 10612. So one o six point one two, and so they kind of miss that one, but again, it is what it is. You know, I'm just putting my data from a real race up here, and I really challenge other people to put their data from real races taken by parents who are standing out in the cold and don't have a lot of training and make a YouTube video out of it and be honest and see how your numbers match up with mine. I'm pretty confident that they're going to be pretty similar. All right, now we're just down to, we got to find one little piece of data, a few more pieces of data and we're, and we're there. Okay. So bib one, was the last competitor 
for the first run for the second run and had a start time of 13.0801.6362 and a finish time of 13.0854.0. Seven six seven three, and an elapsed time of five three point one three. So we go over and plug that in. Oh, six two and thirteen. Oh. Eight five four point seven six seven three and elapsed time of zero five three point one three and remember that over here I already fill I already put in that bib number in that set of parentheses so now I'm going to come back here we're going to go down. Um, Let's run two, run one, run two, somewhere right in here. This is going to be the secondary times for bib one for the second run. 13.0801.6362. Oh eight five four seven six seven three. Wow, so it's almost exact. Well, it is exactly the same. Okay, fill that in. Thirteen oh eight oh one point six three five three and thirteen oh eight point five four. Point seven six seven three, and so at the end of that race, I see that my synchronization is still within a thousandth of a second, both at the start and the finish. And now I need to do a hand time for that competitor. So that's going to be somewhere right in here. Start hand time for bib one thirteen oh eight zero one point three nine and then hopefully down here somewhere I'm gonna be able to find the finish hand time. There it is thirteen oh eight five four point five six and I do a little subtraction that becomes a seven one three five three one seven so I get a five three one seven and that's much better so probably at the start of the girls run they were a little asleep at the switch because they had just kind of rushed up there after lunch and they weren't really ready for bib one to be uh, jumping out or bib 58 to be jumping out of the gate so fast but by the end of the race they had gotten it together and so that is all over except for I want to save it and I want to print it and and then I'm going to be done and so that is the end of this video and I will now attach this to that um, file that you can go to the web and you can download and follow along at home.